I'm Ashlyn. And I'm Zach. And we're traveling A to Z. This week we're exploring Anza Borrego State Park in Southern California. Anza Borrego is located in the United States in Southern California, east of San Diego. We're going to show you the top 10 places to see and hike while you're at this park. So we made it into Anza Borrego State Park. We're heading into the valley. Behind me, you could see the Salton Sea and a gorgeous view. Currently at the Overlook, we're at 2,300 feet, and down below you could see the Anza Borrego Park. It's 600,000 square feet. It's the biggest state park in California. Just made it to Anza Borrego State Park, and we are gonna drive in and go to the visitor station and check it out, and then start exploring the park. We made it to Borrego Springs and we are going to go to our first stop, which is the Visitor Center. We like to hit the Visitor Center first so we could get a map and to see what the rangers recommend for the top places to see. We're going to go check out the Visitor Center. So this Visitor Center is subterranean. There's a building underneath us, but Looking out this way, it just looks like desert. This is neat. So behind me, you can see the town of Borrego Springs. That high point right there is Fonts Point. It's overlooking the Badlands, which are to the south. So apparently Anza Borrego is named after this guy, Juan Baptiste de Anza. It's not a word in Spanish, it's just a name. It's a mammoth skull from a southern mammoth. It's upside down, so you're seeing his teeth at the top, but that's a mammoth right there. And a mammoth upper forearm. Also called a humerus, if you think that's funny. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, wow, look at the tortoise shell. Oh my gosh, look how big that is. The tortoises. We're in the visitor center right now. Ashlyn is pointing to the stuffed bighorn sheep and saying, Oh, look, we just saw a bighorn sheep. It doesn't count. You know, whatever. Our second stop is to Galita Meadows in search of all the metal sculptures. They're all around Borrega Springs. So we're exploring the Galita Meadows, which has approximately 130 statues all throughout the desert. I think there's even more than that, uh, but I know there's at least 130. So it's pretty cool, you just drive. You could use a two-wheel drive car pretty easily. It's actually a pretty good little gravel road. Um, a four-wheel drive is even nicer and pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, we got a map at the visitor center and it had a brochure that had all the different locations of all the sculptures and little explanations of the sculpture. So it was pretty cool. So I do recommend stopping by the visitor center and getting one. It did cost us was a laminated one, like eight or nine dollars, but it's, it's actually cool to be able to like know what you're looking at. So these statues are all the bighorn sheep. These are the desert bighorn sheep and this is what the park is known for because it's a refuge for two-thirds of the desert bighorn sheep. There's a lot of dirt and sand, but it's pretty hard packed and you can just drive right by all the sculptures. If you want, you could get out and explore or you could just drive by. It's a Jeep. Apparently these were based on the World War II Willys Jeep and uh, they opened up desert exploration because of their go anywhere abilities. So they made a monument to it. And this state park is known for its off-roading with Jeeps, like that's the thing to do. This is a serpent. It has the head of a dragon, a body of a serpent, and a tail of a rattlesnake. It is 350 feet uh, in length, and it goes from one side of the road to the other side of the road. 
It's cool because every little part of it has over a thousand scales. Apparently it took like three months to like design and then three months to build this, so a long time. And it's supposedly the 129th sculpture that was formed in the Goleta Meadows. Sculpture is for the sloths that used to be here. I don't know what the plural of sloth is, but there's more than one of them. Um, they made this because they find a whole bunch of artifacts of sloths where they have bone embedded in their skin. And they were found here, the fossils are over 2.3 million years old. This is the scorpion and the grasshopper. The scorpions live in the desert and they're mainly found in the southwest desert. That's a big mammoth. Apparently there's two species of mammoth that are found in North America. They were originally from Asia and they migrated here during an ice age or something. And uh, this is a sculpture of one of them. So the Columbia mammoth was found to be 1.1 million years old. And they actually have a skeleton of its head in the visitor center that you could see. It's pretty neat. This is the Aeolorus incredibilis, the wing god bird. This thing had a 17 foot wingspan. They've only got six specimens of these were ever found. Three of them were in this desert. And so this is its typical prey, an old peccary pig. This is about twice the size of the actual bird. But it's huge. I'm about to get eaten by a velociraptor. It looks like you're gonna get ate by a velociraptor. Ah! <laughs> the first hike we're going to is the slot, which is supposed to be an amazing slot canyon, which is in the southeast part of the park. To get all the way to the start of the hike, you need a four-wheel drive vehicle. There is a parking lot that you could stop at if you have two-wheel drive and then walk the rest of the way in. We're gonna go hike this slot. It's supposed to be a really cool slot canyon. It's supposed to be actually pretty short, only like a half a mile, but you can loop around and make it like a two mile hike. So we're just following the footprints. We don't really know what way to go. Um, there's a trail sign at the beginning, and as we went down into the canyon, we're not sure if it's supposed to go right or left. I don't know. So we went the wrong way. So when you get down, you turn left, not right. As we keep going in, about 0.3 miles in, definitely higher walls. More slot like. Oh wow, it's dark. Look. We're totally in a slot canyon now. It finally narrowed up. It's getting more slot canyon like. It's pretty cool. see why this is one of the most popular hikes in the park. It's pretty cool. It's cooler than up above and it's a short hike, <laughs> which is nice. So you look up and you see like all these huge boulders above your head. Kind of scary. 
Have you ever seen 127 hours where the guy gets stuck in the slot can underneath a rock? Yeah, it looks like that. Definitely have some narrow sections. Gotta suck it in a little bit. Yeah, this is a pretty cool hike. Yeah, it's pretty tall too. Like, it's probably, what, 50 feet, 60 feet tall? It's pretty tall. And it's definitely a lot cooler down here. It's probably, what, 10 degrees cooler than in the sun? At oh, least. at least. Maybe more? Probably more. And I think we're out. Yeah, I think that was the slot canyon. That was good. That was definitely worth the drive out here. That was cool. It's no Antelope Valley, but for or half Antelope a mile Canyon or, or whatever, hiking Anza flat. Borrego hiking flat, <laughs> definitely worth it. Our first stop in the morning is to watch the sunrise at Fonts Point. To get to Fonts Point, it's definitely off-roading in deep sand, so you need a four-wheel drive vehicle to get there. So it's about 5.40, 5.45 in the morning, and we are heading off-roading to Fonts Point, which is supposed to be one of the best places to see the sunrise in the park. So we are currently at Fonts Point and we are watching the sunrise rise right over the Badlands. It's, it's really pretty up here. that Fonts Point is inspirational outlook and it's pretty good. Uh, we came for sunrise and got to see the sun come up over the horizon and the light hit the shadows behind me and uh, it's pretty nice. Because it was dark as we drove in you couldn't see the road very well. Now you can see how deep the sand is as we drive out. So we went to Fonts Point. It's about a four mile, four by four dirt trail that heads through the sand to the overlook. Our first hike of the day is to Borrego Palm Canyon. This hike is located by the visitor center. The hike leads to a beautiful palm oasis. And we're hiking the Palm Groves Trail. It's approximately three miles round trip, about one and a half miles to the Palm Groves. Apparently, the bighorn sheep like to hang out there, and we're hoping to see some. I don't know if we will. It sounds like the person that just came back has not seen any yet, so we're crossing our fingers. So lavender looks kind of like a grass to me, but there's something called desert lavender, which is this bush thing behind me. Um, you kind of rub the leaves a little bit and it smells like lavender, it really does. So all these rocks around here are from a flash flood that came off the mountain and then they just landed here. There's a bunny rabbit. So this thing covered in bees is a desert willow. It's not a true willow tree, it's a desert bush, but we're here in the springtime and we got to see it with flowers. So their roots apparently could go 60 foot deep to get water. The ancient Indians, I don't know how to say it, Kachia Indians? The women used to grind and make food here in the rocks and they picked the Palm Canyon as a place to live because it was sheltered from the, the wind and because of the stream and water source here. But you can see the little area right here where it looks like they, they ground their, their food and their seeds and stuff. There's just little spots all over. Way off in the distance over there, you can see the palm fronds. Okay, heading the Palm Oasis. So you can make this an out and back and then keep going where we came from or you could do an alternative route and do like a loop through the part of the mountain. Tons of old palms. This used to probably be really big at one point. When this became a state park in the 1930s, some of the people developed it, put up these steps. We are almost there. I can see the California 
palm fronds in front of us. You think if I don't move, I'm not going to see them. There's two frogs right there. Can you see them? So apparently this thing right here is called a palm skirt. Um, it's supposed to help the palm not lose water and keep the bugs away. As you can see behind me, a lot of the palm trees have the black on it and that's darkening from a fire. The palm trees are coming back pretty nicely. They look good. So we just finished the Palm Oasis hike and it was nice. It's about three mile hike, a little less than that. And we went 434 feet elevation gain, pretty flat, not too bad. A little scrambling occasionally, but not much over rocks. So it was great. Our next hike is to the wind caves. To the, get to the wind caves, it is in the southeast part of the park. You go to the end of the pavement and then you turn right on a dirt road called Fish Creek Wash. You need four wheel drive to go on this road and then you go about two and a half miles before you get to the trailhead. So we're heading to the wind caves and we think we're almost there and it's a little rocky, a little sketchy, but we're getting there. So as you're driving to the, the road, um, you end up on this dirt road and Finally, you come to this big open area, and this is kind of the hiking spot to get to the wind caves, and the trail is to the left. It's right up the hill, and so there's a little sign you could see, but it's a big open area, and this is the first time you'll get this, and that's kind of when you need to stop for the hike. So we're heading to wind caves. We're not exactly sure what a wind cave is, but apparently it's supposed to be a must-do hike in the park. So we're gonna check it out. It says one mile. I'm not sure if that's round trip or one way. Guess we'll find out. So behind us, you can see the wind caves, which was formed from the wind. Um, it's really windy up here, as you can see. And it's formed all these caves with holes and we're gonna go explore them wind caves created when the wind and rain erodes the soft rock out of the hard rock and it leaves little holes. It's a hundred and something degrees out here, but in the shade it's actually not too bad. It took us about a half a mile to get to the wind caves from the parking area. Yeah, about 300 foot elevation gain. Not too bad. It definitely is hot, so it makes it a little harder. So we just did the Wind Caves hike. It was a nice trail. I recommend it. It's a little hot, so do it in the morning. Our next hike is right off the Highway 78, and it's called the Narrows Earth Trail. So we're going to go to the Narrows Earth Trail. It's supposed to be a half a mile trail. You can see the fault line. So this little concrete wall right here was part of a building that was constructed in the 1930s to house explosives while they were building the road. And in addition to that, this little line right here is a fault. So you see one piece of rock moving over another. There's hundreds of small fault lines within this Anza Borrega Park. And they're saying it's part of the San Andreas Fault and rocks that were found here are also found in Monterey, like 400 miles away. Pretty crazy. So we're heading back. It's a really easy hike. It's really flat. It's a hike you could actually get to without four wheel drive. And it's nice because it has information about um, all the rock formations around and there's little signs as you walk around. For our A stop, we're stopping by a village. To get to the village, you go off-roading along Mine Wash, which is a dirt road, and the old remnants of the village is off to the left. 
So we went down Mine Wash and we're heading, we're at a old Indian village. Apparently this is where they wintered because they had a lot of plants and then they had the boulders for shelter. So we don't really know what these things are called. They're called mortoros or mortaros or something like that. Anyway, it's this hole right here that you get from grinding a pestle into the mortar of the rock to grind up flour out of seeds of some kind. There's over 200 of them around. You'll see them all throughout this area in the rocks. So all the chillo plants around here are blooming. They're so pretty. They have all the flowers. Huge spikes, if you could see. Look at that. And these ones, it must have had rain recently because they're starting to get some leaves on them. Our next stop is to go hike to Petroglyphs. It is a dirt road and you definitely need four wheel drive to get out here. We're doing the Petroglyph Trail. Supposing a mile. After about a three quarters of a mile walk, you end up at this, the uh, petroglyphs. They're a lot more vivid than I thought they were going to be. It's pretty nice. So one thing to be aware of, there's no signs that says, hey, we're here. So I got it exactly 0.75 miles and it's to the right of the trail in this big rock. That's where you see it. The trail will continue on and there's nothing past that except for a view. Our last stop in Anza Borrego and our last hike is in Hell's Hole Canyon. We're gonna head to Hell Hole Canyon. It's a uh, little cooler morning, so we're starting about 75 degrees instead of like 90 like the other day. And so it's supposed to be about a five and a half mile hike out to a waterfall. So we're walking off into the desert. That little spot of green right there, that's where we're going. Apparently that's two and a half miles away. It doesn't look that far, but I don't know, I guess distances are receiving that. nothing around us. We are definitely walking into the desert, which I guess Hell's Canyon is because it's always hot right here. Makes sense. This is funny, about half a mile in, there's like a little fake grave and said they didn't bring enough water. <laughs> That's cute. We've been hiking about a half an hour, about a mile and a half in, and the palm trees just look super far away still. Uh, I know we're hiking towards them, but they're still really far. So we've been hiking a little over two miles and we just got to the first part of the palm trees. So we're getting there. So once you get to the palm trees, you have to start scrambling over rocks. So that's what we're doing right now, but at least it's fairly shaded. So we got past the third palms. Now it's kind of like a different environment. It's like oak and cool and pretty. We made it to the end of the trail. This is the Hell's Canyon Trail and it ends with a 20 foot waterfall. a waterfall in the desert is pretty neat. You must be aware that this waterfall is seasonal. We came in April, so it was flowing, but later in the year it will not be. Outside of Anza Borrego, there is another state park called Cayamaca Rancho State Park. Join us next week as we show you some of the top things to do at this state park. Please subscribe below to follow more of our adventures.